Hello family. Um, I wanted to do a quick video because um, I wanted to address something and I wanted to let you all know that uh, even though I posted the 144,000 videos I will continue with Song of Solomon. Um, someone had requested that I put those up and they are actually a repost from videos that I recorded in February last year. So please forgive me. There are times in those videos, uh, the ones I just posted, where I sound frustrated. <laughs> and that's because when I was recording I was kind of frustrated. Um, and also I'm a very passionate person. Um, I'm an artist and uh, I guess you could call me a zealot in some respects. So when I get passionate about a topic, um, it comes out in my tone. And I just say that because I don't want to sound haughty or, um, you know, like I'm a know-it-all because I most definitely am not. Um, it's just uh, zeal within me when I speak about certain things. And I do get frustrated with um, uh, people who may not see what I see, and I know it's not their fault. Um, they just haven't been shown certain things yet, and um, and then I don't get frustrated at them. I get frustrated because they can't see it. And and you all know what I'm talking about. It's like when we try to witness to our loved ones or to anyone. And we try to tell them the times that we're in and they don't see it. It is frustrating. So that's all that that, that is um, in certain parts of, the, of those videos where I, I might sound a little frustrated. So um, I listened to part one and two, but I didn't finish re-listening to the rest of the parts. So, um, and I believe since I posted those that I might have some better understanding and please know that when I teach it's of course my human understanding of what I believe the Holy Spirit has shown me and so therefore it's my human interpretation but I try to stick with what scripture says when I interpret interpret so but that doesn't mean that I'm right about everything I, I will never say that. It just means that that was my understanding that um, I was shown at the time. And so when I give my interpretation of scripture, it's, it's Holy Spirit gives me the information and then I interpret it the best way I can. So... Um, I don't have a problem with anyone disagreeing. Uh, the The issue comes with when people disagree and they uh, don't do it with love. There's no no problem with with disagreeing and and talking about these things, but we're supposed to sharpen each other, not tear down each other sharpen each other not one be sharper than the other and tear them down so um, the reason I'm doing this video is because there's been a topic that keeps coming up repeatedly 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 and so I wanted to address it and I want to to give what I see what scripture says and it's not it's not like it's a a big issue certainly not a salvation issue but it's it's something, it's, it's a topic that keeps coming up. I keep getting comments from, from subscribers and other people, of course, are saying it in their videos. And so I wanted to address it to give you a different view. And the reason being is because there are patterns in the word and we're supposed to follow those patterns when we try to get an understanding of what scripture is trying to teach us 
And so I'm just going to show you what I see. Doesn't mean I have it all right, but um, the Holy Spirit is, is nudging me to present it and you can accept it or you can walk away. It's up to you. I'm just going to show you what scripture says and the patterns there in scripture that we should follow when we interpret scripture. So, um, and what it has to do with, and I'm going gonna, I'm tr gonna to do my best. I'm, this is not going to be a long video, so don't worry. I just have to point out because um, it's, like I said, the only reason I'm pointing it out is because I want to show the patterns that are in the Word and how they're there for a reason. They're there to guide us in interpreting other parts of the Word. We know that we have to um, cross-reference and go back and forth. That's what we're supposed to do. We're not supposed to take Scripture out of context and, and interpret it that way. We're supposed to show it with other parts of Scripture and then interpret it and you know, there should be at least two witnesses so and I'm sure that people who don't agree with what I'm going to say are going to have their own interpretations of how they think scripture saying but I'm going to show you what scripture says not an interpretation but what scripture says so you can um, take it as you will and like I said mostly I, I want to try to show those who um, are still learning about things in scripture and I know that this channel there's varying degrees there are people who are, um, are still learning scripture and then there are people who are well learned in scripture so I bind the spirit of offense right now and ask father um, I, I always pray this prayer, but I'm going to pray it right now. That he bind all lying, deceiving spirits, and that only what he wants me to say comes forth. Only his truth and nothing else. And I ask these things in the name of his beloved son, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus of Nazareth. Amen. Um, so please don't be offended if you're well learned in the word and you already know this. This is, I, I just try to show, you know, I don't want to not include those who need a little better understanding. Um, so, with that being said, what the topic is about is um, when the month begins. <laughs> and the only reason I have to do this is because it, it keeps coming up and it's... Um, I just want to make sure people understand. They also keep leaving the link and keep referring to a certain channel and I am not judging this channel at all because I believe that there's really really good stuff there from what I've seen um, and I went there myself and started to watch the video and as soon as they brought up a certain thing that in my spirit was a check as far as when the month begins I stopped watching um, doesn't mean I don't want to hear what the rest of what this channel is saying because I do but um, that part made me go away because I you know so I'm gonna show what scripture says and you all can um, take it as you will uh, I'm still trying to make sure I have a full understanding of these things but I just wanted to point out the alternate view so that people can uh, just meditate on that. Um, so many people this, in this day and age are going by their feelings and their emotions and their opinions instead of inf informing, uh, forming interpretations of what scripture says and um, that can lead to forming another doctrine in the end. Not saying that the other channel that um, people keep referring myself to 
and others is doing that. I'm not saying that they're teaching false doctrine by any means. I'm just want to show the alternative. So, okay. Um, so the channel that keeps getting, uh, left for people to go to, and I'm sure it's not the only one, because believe me, when I was studying calendar and trying to figure out, because I wanted, I wanted to follow the Sabbath, not because it's the law. I know we're not under the law. Okay, I'm going to try to stay calm. <laughs> not because it's the law, but because I want to please my father. I do believe we should follow the Ten Commandments. Those are just that, you know, if you don't think we should follow the Ten Commandments, then you're saying it's okay to cheat and murder and commit adultery and have other gods. So those Ten Commandments, we definitely should follow. And the Fourth Commandment is to keep the Sabbath. So that's, if you don't want to keep the Sabbath, that's fine. I'm not judging you. But I wanted to because I wanted to please my father. And so I trying to figure, okay, well, what day is the Sabbath? I want to make sure I'm doing it on the right day. And the Holy Spirit was guiding me to different calendars. And one of the calendars I came across was one that taught that the month begins with the full moon. And I thought the exact same thing that other people are thinking now that are following the month beginning with the full moon, that, well, the full moon represents light, and so therefore that must be the beginning of the month. That makes sense. And that's what people are saying, that the, the month can't begin with the first crescent or with the dark phase because that's darkness and it doesn't have anything to do with our Father, our Savior, who is light. And that's true, but what they're forgetting is this world is under a curse. Until the millennial reign, we're under a curse. And scripture says that we began in darkness. Here's the pattern. Everything in creation, the earth, the days, us, begins in darkness and goes towards the light. We don't begin in light. Genesis 1, I'm going to go there in just a second. Everything begins in darkness and we move towards the light. We don't begin in the light, not until the millennial reign. That's the pattern that the Father's trying to show us in his word, that everything here is corrupted. All of creation is corrupted. And so we don't begin in light. We begin in darkness, we move towards the light. And there are two witnesses to back up the theory that things that begin, whether it's the beginning of creation, the beginning of a day, the beginning of a month, does not begin with light. Actually, there are three witnesses. So I'm going to show you that and just think about it. I'm not judging anyone who's following the full moon beginning the month thing. I'm not judging them. I'm just showing you what scripture says and you can make your own decision. Pray about it and make your own decision. Um, it's truth, so I have to bring forth truth. Okay, so let's go to Genesis. Okay, so the pattern is laid out in Genesis. Verse 2, chapter 1, verse 2, in the very beginning. So, before the first day began, when the, this is the beginning right here. It says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. So, in the beginning, there was darkness. That's the pattern. Beginning, darkness. This word beginning, I'm going to show you how it ties to a new month. Beginning. If my computer will hurry up and get there. Okay, so the the Strong's a root word for beginning is, I'm sorry, the Strong's word for beginning is Rashith, and it means beginning the chief, the head of and down here you will see 
from the same as Rosh. Rosh is means beginning, the first in place and time or rank. The beginning of a month is called Rosh Kodesh, means the set apart beginning. Kodesh means uh, set apart. Um, so you see here that the beginning has to do with, it means the head of. So, and right there in Genesis 1, 1, it says that in the beginning there was darkness, not light. Okay, so then the everything begins in darkness and goes to the light. This light is of course not the sun, it's speaking of the Holy Spirit, Yah himself. So we begin the earth began in darkness and goes to the light. So this is the first witness. The second witness is the evening and the morning were the first day. There's a reason why the evening is mentioned before the morning. We all have been accustomed to, unless you're a Jew following the Jewish calendar, you know that you have been taught that the day begins when the sun comes up. And it will in the millennial reign because the, the sun will be the sun. The S-O-N. There won't be a sun and a moon. So, um, this is seems odd to us, but there's a reason that it's in here. He's trying to show us the pattern that everything begins in darkness and goes towards the light. We don't begin with the light. We begin in sin and darkness and we go towards the light of salvation. And there are people who are emphatic about believing and teaching that the day begins at dawn. Well, that's not what scripture says. Scripture says right here, the evening and the morning or the first day. So there's the second witness. The third witness to the month beginning in darkness and going towards the light is here in Psalm 81.3 and people have misinterpreted this verse because if you don't know that's why you have to know about his feast days and when they are on the calendar because if you don't know that then you don't understand what this verse is saying and people just throw this very last part out the window to try to make the point that they believe that the month starts with the verse says below I've covered this before but like I said I just want to cover it again and if I'm misinterpreting something, then I will be open to correction. I would be the first one to admit, admit I was wrong. But um, actually, after I show you this, we're going to go to Exodus 12 to show how the month beginning with a full moon does not fit. Okay, so... This verse says, "Blow up the trumpet in the new moon in the appointed in the time appointed on our solemn feast day." So, when they go here and they say new moon, they say, "Oh, it's the beginning of a month," which it is, but it also means the month itself. That's the tricky thing about Hebrew words is, and Greek words that they can mean one thing and then they can mean another thing. So, um. See, there's the word Kodesh, and the beginning of the, the month is called Rosh Kodesh. We know that Rosh means the head of, the beginning of. So, that's why the new moon is called Rosh Kodesh. So, um, we now are taught that the new moon is the dark phase. And as we just saw in Genesis 1-1, the new moon being the beginning 
everything begins in darkness and goes towards the light. So not only does this mean the beginning of a month, because new moon means new month, the word month comes from the word moon, but it also can mean the month itself. It can mean the beginning of the month or just the month itself. Okay. And then in the time appointed, when you hover over that, it says full moon. So the people who believe that the month begins with the full moon, this is how they interpret it. That it's saying a new month begins with the full moon and they stop there. <laughs> and you can't do that. You have to add the rest of the verse, which says on our solemn feast day. This solemn feast day is Chag. And it's specifically referring to, well, let's click on it so I can show you for those who haven't seen where I covered this before. It's specifically referring to um, the, the three pilgrim feasts only, which are the Feast of Unleavened Bread, Shavuot, and the Feast of Tabernacles. It, those are the three feasts that the Hebrews, the Israelites, were, were commanded in the word to go to Jerusalem and offer their offerings at the temple. They could not observe these feasts in their hometown. They had to sojourn and make a pilgrimage to Jerusalem for those three. Okay, so then all you have to do when you know, okay, is saying that, let's go back. Let me just here confirm festival feast, um, pilgrim feast. And then down here it shows you, did I miss it? Um, feast, especially one observed by a pilgrimage. Somewhere in here it it's, well, all I have to do, I, I can't find it right now. Oh, here we go. Passover is mentioned there. Um, all you have to do, and there's, yeah, we're, that's, hmm, what if we're, we'll have to go look at verse 4. Um, but when you go back in Leviticus and other places where it talks about the feast, it tells you that uh, these are the three feasts that he says you must appear before him. Speaking of our Father in Heaven who wrote this word <laughs> through His Holy Spirit. Okay, so let's go back. So what we just read there where it said, uh, verse 4, this was a statue for Israel and the law of Elohim of Jacob. He was, he's referring to these three feasts, which, like I just said, are um, commanded to appear in Jerusalem. Okay, so now all you have to, this is like putting the pieces of, of an investigation together. You have to say, okay, well, we have um, either the beginning of a month or the month itself. There's a full moon involved and there is a Chag feast, a pilgrimage feast, which is either going to be the Feast of Unleavened Bread or the Feast of Shavuot or the Feast of Tabernacles. So you have to take the evidence and then solve what this verse is saying. Okay, we know for a fact, because scripture says so, that the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the first day, and the Feast of the First Day of Tabernacles both begin on the 15th day of the month. Um, Shavuot, it depends, it can fall on a different day of the month on the Hebrew calendar. But we know for a fact that the beginning feast and the end feast of those three begin on the 15th. Okay, so just put 15th right here in place of Psalm Feast. So 15th on a full moon in the month. That's basically the breakdown. So for people who believe that the month begins with a full moon, they're saying that the Hebrew month begins on the 15th day, not the first day. That kind of doesn't make any sense, but I was even considering it. I'm like, okay, well, that, that makes sense because um, the first day of Unleavened Bread was when Yeshua's work was finished. And now there's, it's a day, it's new beginnings because the debt for sin has been paid, so it's a new beginning. So, yeah, I can go with that, that, um, that the month could actually begin on the 15th 
and not on the first day. I'll go with that. The problem is when you go to Exodus 12, where it speaks of the first Passover, the very first one. This is where Adonai, our father Yahuwah, spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month, meaning Nisan, here's the Kodesh, unto you shall be unto you the beginning of months. So there's Rosh again, the head of the months. So he's saying, This month of Nisan, this is why I want you to start your year which is why on a Hebrew calendar, the beginning of a new year starts in Nissan. Okay, so everything's going good. I'm like, okay, well, yeah, the month could begin on the 15th. We know it has to begin if, for, if, for, if it was for certain that the month began with a full moon, then we just read in Psalm 81.3 that it has to begin on the 15th. You can't, you can't take part of the verse out to make it fit a different narrative. Okay, but here's where this fixes that problem because he says this is going to be the beginning of months you, the first month of the year to you, and then he goes on to say, speaking to all the congregation of Israel, saying in the tenth day of this month. Okay, stop. If the month did perhaps begin in the middle, on the 15th day, then how is the 10th part of that month? Do you see what I'm saying? If day one of a Hebrew month begins on the 15th day with a full moon, 15th and full moon go hand in hand. You can't separate them. So if the month begins on the 15th day, then that means that the 10th day is not part of that month. It's part of another month. But scripture says, in the tenth day of this month. So he's connecting the tenth day to this first month. So right there, that squashes the fact that the month cannot begin on the fifteenth day with a full moon. I hope you see what I'm trying to say. And trust me, like I said, I went through the gamut of... I said the same thing to myself when I was considering the full moon beginning a month calendar, I was like, yeah, that makes sense. I was saying the same thing that other people are saying. That makes sense that the month should begin with light because light has to do with, you know, our Lord. Here's the thing. The sun is symbolic of the S-O-N. The S-U-N is symbolic of the S-O-N and it's mentioned in Malachi chapter 4 where, well, let's go look. Chapter 4, verse 2, But unto you that fear that my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings, and ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. There's a reason why it's S-U-N. He's making a symbolic tie to the S-U-N, which means the sun that's up there in the sky that gives life and light. He's making an analogy to his son, S-O-N, and I'm sure that there's, it's not coincidence that a male um, lineage of a man is called an S-O-N. Like, that can't be coincidence. The, the, in other words, these are synonymous. So the sun, the light in the sky sun is symbolic and representative of our Savior, who is the light of the world. The sun is the light of the world, that ball up in the sky, the light of the world. The moon, the sun is the greater light, the moon is the lesser light. That's in Genesis, where we just were, chapter 1, and not created until the fourth day. There was no sun and no moon until the fourth day. So, as you see, there's four days of Earth's creation where there's no light except for the Holy Spirit light on that first day. It's not talking about the S-U-N, it's talking about the S-O-N. <laughs> so, so the sun and the sky represents a symbolic of the light of the world who is our Savior and the moon who is the lesser light is symbolic of his body that is us, believers. So, we as believers begin in darkness until we find him 
We are lost sheep that have gone astray, all of us, until we find him, or he finds us, I should say, because no one go, goes to the Father except through the Son, and, this, and the Father calls us to his Son. We don't go on our own. The Father calls us through his Holy Spirit. So, the moon and everything beginning, a day, a month, creation, everything begins in darkness. We symbolic as a representative of the lesser light we begin in darkness and we go to the light you see what I'm saying okay so we can't equate the beginning of a month starting in light because of it being a, a tied to Yeshua because it's tied to us not him we are the lesser light the moon representative symbolically of the moon it's talking about us not him so we can't you see he's the sun he's not the moon we are the moon so that's all I wanted to say um, please pray about this and um, I basically wanted to show not to prove someone else wrong and me right I wanted to show the patterns that are in scripture and how one should follow those patterns they're there for a reason and we can't make up our own doctrine according to what scripture says and I'm tr I, I'm trying to be careful with what I say because um, it's about interpretation and we all see through a glass dimly but when you use Holy Spirit reasoning to interpret scripture it it comes out much better than when we do it ourselves. and I will admit that you know I'm human and I have been guilty of misinterpreting scripture because I didn't know and when I prayed and asked him to show me the truth he does and that's what I try to share but it doesn't mean I'm always right so I just wanted to share that with you guys um, I'm I have not studied everything on this particular website that is always and I'm sure you all know what I'm talking about it's Mikhail Shabbat Ministries I'm not saying that that person is teaching false doctrine that's not what I'm saying I'm just trying to show because I do believe that every the Yah's clock and I've said it many times in my videos is governed by the stars the Sun the moon and the stars they're put up there for a reason that's his clock that's how he moves things and that's why the Sabbath day is not on the same day every week because everything in the heavens moves it's a clock and they're cogs and they all sink and move together they move move they don't stay stagnant so the Sabbath being on the same day every single week that's a lie from the pit and like I said the main reason I'm covering this is because I want to show the patterns that are in the word because they're guidelines the father lays them down and says here's the pattern follow this pattern um, and you know I just showed scripture that proves that the month doesn't start on the 15th day and it doesn't start on a full moon and not because that's my opinion or my interpretation it's because what scripture says in Psalm 81.3 so uh, that's all I want to say I know this is really really long I'm sorry but you know me <laughs> so for those who don't watch um, that's okay I, I will just uh, ask please for your prayer um, the attacks are, are more um, because it, you know I, I'm teaching and so therefore I, there's going to be more attacks um, so I, I as people who may have unsubscribed because they don't like teaching they just want to hear when is the rapture going to be <laughs> that's okay too um, 
but I try to to show what the Holy Spirit reveals to me in His Word, and how it does point to our soon blessed hope. So, please keep me in your prayers, because uh, the enemy hates what I'm doing. So, I need prayer, please. Thank you. I love you guys, and, um... Uh... Yeah, that's all I want to say. I was going to say something else, but that's okay. So, um, I'm just going to end with the blessing. That's another thing that the enemy hates. But greater is he that is in me than he that is in this world. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam. Blessed are you, Adonai Elohim, King of the Universe. Yahuwah. Yahushua. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise you, Father. Praise the Son. Okay, I pray that you all are blessed by this message and that you have a blessed day, afternoon, evening, wherever you are. I love you so much. Thank you for all your love. Shalom.